It's your girl Ro in the building and I'm here to welcome you to my YouTube channel. All right, you guys, let's get into the supplies and the prep work for this particular design. It's a lot to go over, but I want you guys to hang on in there because it is going to be a great video. So let's get right into it. Now, the supplies here I'm going to be using, I'm going to go over with you in great detail. I got my Fonda here, yellow, red, black, purple, and white. I'm going to go over each piece on how to create them. These are the tentacles that I'm going to create by hand. Then I have my little skeleton hands here and the blood that's on them. And I got my little rings. These rings are the rings that go to the side of the cogent pot and then i got my edible blood which is by never forgotten design and we're going to touch on that and then we got some leaf cutters to make the flames to the pot some circle cutters and then the skeleton mold and of course you're going to need your rolling pin a sculpting tool that i'm going to use in this video and my little measure to measure out that edible blood and my handy dandy scraper also these are the other supplies by semi semi cakes.com this is the mold that i'm going to make the eyeball and these are the isomalt chips um, that's the clear and this is the isomalt in the color white now these are the edible images of the eyeballs they come in a pack like this by semi cakes you guys check it out the links will be listed in the description box below i'm going to be using some almond bark and i'm going to color it with the chocolate chameleon black and you're going to clean your apples you don't need to strip them from the wax but clean them dry them off and then insert your stick i'm using a 6.5 by 5.0 for the decorated straw to go over you want to pierce that in there just halfway so you have your apples prepped now let's get into the first piece. I'm going to create the skeleton hand. Taking your fondant, you want to knead it until it's nice and smooth and then apply it to the cavity mold. And I'm going to take my scraper and just um, glide it right across the fondant and the mold to get off the extra fondant that will be there. This helps um, with just the smoothness and taking off the extra so you can get um, a more detailed piece and you ain't got no fondant hanging over. So the little scraper helps, but just make sure that cavity is full so you can um, create the fullness of this skeleton, the skeleton bones. Now that's all set. And now you set to the side, let's go on to the next piece. Next piece I'm going to create is the tentacles and I'm creating two pieces and I'm creating them by hand, no molds. And I'm using Wilton's fondant. So starting with the purple, um, it, it appears to be a little tough and that's because I added some CMC powder to um, harden up the um, fondant so my pieces can be nice and firm. So the CMC powder um, that I'll be using is by Cellar Bakes and I just, you know, open up a piece of my fondant and just pour in the powder. But because I've already added this, I don't want to add any more. But what you would do is just take it and knead it in until um, the powder is completely gone. So taking my piece, um, the size of the piece, I just eyeball it to the go according to the apple. You don't want it to be too big. You don't want it to be too small, but you just go according to your design. They can be um, small if you want them, but not too big to where it's oversizing the apple and you want it to look, um, just right. So what I'm going to do is like do a broken S and I'm just going to put a little dips, um, in this little rope. After you roll it out, you want to thin out one side and have the bottom a little thick. And I just cut off, um, some of this extra cause I'm cutting it down now, cutting it down to size and just thin that out because that's going to be, um, the end tip of the tentacle. And once you do that, you just roll it with your hand 
to just thin it out, or you could do it on the surface and just continue to um, put those dips in it to curve it like it's in motion, like the tentacle is in motion. And once you get that size, you like I said, you want to prep these days in advance so they can become nice and firm and easy to apply to your apples. Now you set these to the side at room temperature. I'm creating the other one, another broken S, which is going to just go the opposite way. You can see the difference in both shapes. Um, and I'm just creating like the motion of the tentacle. So as you see here, I got one, P one end thinner than the other one. And the thick part is going to be my bottom, which is going to go um, at the top of the apple. Now I'm cutting off the extra and then I'm going to thin that out to make it nice and smooth and curve it a little bit to make it look like it's in motion. Now, once you get done with these pieces, you can leave them out on your countertop, dining room table, dining room table um, at room temperature. You don't need to cover them because you want them to become firm. The firmer, the better. So now I'm just forming it into its shape, just, you know, stretching out to find it. And I'm just going to finish forming the tentacle into the shape that I want it to go in. Now that's done, we're gonna go over to the next step. Taking your black finder, you wanna take off small pebble pieces, small to large, to create like the suction part of the tentacle. Also, you wanna create a nice little strip to create that black part. And you're just gonna, fl I'm flattening it with my finger and then I'm gonna roll it with the rolling pin just to you know, thin it out. Um, cause you don't want it too thick. You want it to look natural. So you're going to apply a little bit of water to apply that black strip and you want to form it to the shape of this tentacle and just apply it on on there. Nice and smooth. Now that's it. Now we're going to add the other pieces. See? Now, these little pebbles, you're going to apply another strip of water, a little water strip there with your brush. And starting at the bottom, so this will be the bottom, you want to go large and then work your way up and make it small. So I'm taking a small, small balling tool and press in the center of that round piece of find it and this is what you're going to create so that's how you create um, these little sections of the tentacle and that's how they come out to look they should come out looking like this right here so now i'm going to be creating the handles to the cogent pot now i'm using um a bigger size this well it's small size but a bigger size circle the uh, circle plunger then i'm going to take a smaller size and cut out the center so i can have that handle and that's how you create that the links to these um supplies will be listed in the description box below so don't worry um about what size it should be because i'm going to leave the direct link to the actual size of these supplies and again, you're going to prep and sit these to the side. When you're creating certain pieces, you want to make sure, and especially if they need to be hardened, you want to prep them ahead of time. So now let's make the eyeballs. Woo! All right, we're getting through it. So here I'm creating the eyeballs. I decided to give the eyeballs a realistic look by using semi-cake isomorph. 
Simi Cakes also has an Isomar starter kit, and that's some of the supplies that you see here, including in that kit are these gloves. So you want to put on the cloth gloves first and then follow with the plastic gloves. It's important that you protect your hands when using Isomar so you won't burn yourself. So you want to start off with the clear Isomar and you want to melt for 30 second intervals. And then you want to follow up with 15 seconds until it's completely melted. Now, the eyes, you want to cut whichever color you choose. But you want to remove the backing and then cut them down as close as you can so they can be those beautiful eyes. And after the 30 seconds, it's going to come out looking like this. But put it back in the microwave for another 15 seconds and uh, intervals until it's completely melted. Let the bubbles settle and pour just a little bit in the mold because you're going to come with another layer of isomalt. Now you want to quickly place the eye side down onto the isomalt and press gently with a toothpick or modeling tool until it flush with the isomalt surface. Now once you have that in there, you want to let it cool for 20 minutes. Then you want to melt some of the white isomalt in another container and pour in the white isomalt over the clear. And once you have that in there, you want to let it cool completely for another 20 minutes. Once cool, bend the mold gently to remove your eyes. When you remove your eyes, there's going to be some cloudiness over the eyes. And to remove that, you're going to need a pastry torch. Now, when you use the pastry torch, please do it over um, a heat-resistant silicone mat. Now, you want to take the torch and lightly torch over the eyeballs. And as you see here, I'm going back and forth, and I'm lightly torching to clear up the cloudiness that is going to form after you create these eyes. Once you're done torching the eyes, you want to let that cool for another 10 to 15 minutes before you touch um, your eyeballs. And here are the finish, here's the finished look. And they look beautiful. And now let's go on to the next step. Now we have our chocolate. Your chocolate or your candy coating. I'm using almond bark. And I'm going to add in chocolate chameleon to create the color. Of course, you want to melt your chocolate, your almond bark for 30 seconds and 30 second intervals until completely melted. I added in a generous amount to get my desired color, and that's black. And once I've got that desired color, then I'm ready to dip my apples. Now let's dip. Going in, doing a rotating turn, coming straight up and getting off that excess. I'm going to use my rolling pin to knock majority of that um, excess off and just sit it onto my silicone mat. You want to dip your apples and have them already done. And once they're done and completely dry, then you're ready to decorate. Look how beautiful these apples are. Nice, smooth, and ready to be decorated. Now, these little decorations I got from Walmart in the cake aisle, and I'm using some Halloween um, nonpareils. I got me some green, lime green um, uh, chocolate to go over the pot. And now I'm just creating the rim. So I rolled out some black fondant to create this rope to go at the top to give my rim, the rim of the pot. And you want to cut off any extra that's lapping over, but you want to smooth that out. Make sure it's nice and neat. Open it up to give you um, that cogent pot look. Now I'm going to take a little bit. I'm using this brush to apply a little bit of the black fondant on the side. 
adding the black fondant will just hold these pieces um, more, more better. And just make sure you size them up so they are even um, once you look at the front of the apple. Now I'm going in and adding in the lime green color. And I'm adding in a generous amount. And then I'm going to tap onto my surface. I'm going to tilt it a little bit to let some of that chocolate spill over. And if you don't get a nice little drip, just take um, your chocolate and just add like little drip marks on top of the pot. And just tap that down to look like it's running over. And just tap, tap, tap it out. Now, before this chocolate dries, you want to start adding your pieces. Now, when you apply your hand, I want you to apply the blood first. Okay, but I did this backwards. So, um, I applied the hand in and then start adding the edible blood. But you want to create the blood look um, on your hand um, before you add it to your pot. So do that first. And it comes out looking like this. So I added some vodka to activate the blood. And this is what it come out to look like. And again, I will leave the link to this product in the description box below. Now I'm starting to apply all my little pieces. I'm adding the eyeball. Then I'm going to follow up with the tentacles. And I'm just placing them in there. When you place these in here, you want to hold them until they solidify and don't move. So you got to hold them for a few minutes. And now I'm going to start to add in my other little um, Halloween pieces to my pot. I got a little boo, ghost, a little bat, um, and a little pumpkin. Then I'm going to add these little bones and then some of the non-pareils over the pot to finish up the look and this is what we come out with now what i should have done was add the flame but because i knew i was doing so much in this video i almost forgot to add the flame so to show you how to add the flame i'm going to um show you that in the next clip because these look amazing so to add the flame you want to use some yellow and red fondant. You want to um, start off with a couple of rows of each color and see how I'm breaking it up and just mending them together. And then I'm going to roll it out with my rolling pin to give that fire look, that red, yellow fire look. And you just want to keep flipping it, mending it together. And then using the leaf cutter for the flame, you just cut out the larger piece. So I use two larger pieces to go on the outside and then the smaller pieces to go in the inside and in, in between the two larger pieces. So you got the two large and the about four small in between. It just depends on the size of your apple. Now, if your fondant is moist enough, it will stick to the apple. If not, then you can take a small brush Add a little water on the back of the fondant and apply it right to your apple. Now, those are the two larger pieces. And now I'm going in with the smaller pieces. And this is how you create the flame. But you want to do this before you start adding all the other stuff that I added. Okay? And that's how you create the flame. You guys, we made it through. So... <laughs> If you have enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below and say, Ro, you did it. We made it through. All right. All the links will be listed in the description box below. And it's your girl, Ro, about to go. And I'll see you all in the next video.